this building, really, the technology, I mean, it's, it's an interesting kind of uh, sort of marriage of, of old technology, of, of going back to, to sort of the vernacular architecture, the indigenous architecture, um, and getting ideas from how the TP uses stack effect to ventilate and how um, the adobe wall structure takes advantage of thermal mass to, to modulate temperature swing throughout a day. So there's all those ideas were, were integral to this building. But at the same time, we have, um, with our extreme temperature swings, we need the building technology, the modern technology, the building management system, the, the motorized operable windows that are automatically controlled to maintain certain temperatures in a double facade. So those two kind of things all came together in this building. And with our control system, we have you know a very high-tech uh, building management system with over 25,000 points. Uh, and, and so when the, when the temperature in the double facade, for example, tends, gets a little bit warm, uh, the opera vents start to slowly open up and, and vent out some of that heat. Or also, you know, if we want to go into natural ventilation mode, the outer facade tends to be open automatically and the inner facade is just an option for the, the, the user, for the occupant to go and open and get themselves some fresh air. The water feature, that's the theme of the building. It's this architecture and engineering functionality being integrated into a system approach. So instead of having a water feature, which we knew we, we liked the idea of a water feature or, or, or several features throughout the building to kind of refer to the hydroelectric dams, which, which are the sort of the, um, the history of Manitoba Hydro. Um, but at the same time, it didn't feel right to have a water feature that was a standalone unit and, and was strictly there for aesthetic purposes or for acoustic purposes. But, you know, with an integrated design team, you start talking about how can that be integrated into a mechanical concept. And, and it turns out by, you know, just like your shower, if you heat up the, the, the water w well enough, it starts to, the, the humidity starts to, um, or the water starts to transfer and mix with the air, and then it increases the overall humidity of the space. And if we cool that off enough, it starts to, to draw some, some moisture out of the air. So that feature can, can not only be an aesthetic and acoustic function, but it can serve a really important engineering function as well. Building envelope in any building, especially in Winnipeg, I think everything is heightened a little bit and magnified in Winnipeg because of the extreme climate. Again, we had our, our consultants came in from Germany and looked at the, the climate of Winnipeg saying there's a 70 Kelvin difference between your sort of peak heating and your peak cooling day. Like they had never heard such an extreme before and they decided, well, but at the same time in Winnipeg, we have a tremendous amount of, of solar radiation. We have 1,350 kilowatt hours per square meter of solar radiation. And, and in Europe, where they have a lot of these sort of passive heating technologies were developed, they only have a thousand. So we have quite a bit more heating, even though we have the temperature extreme. And so the envelope was all about optimizing each facade to maximize the passive heating. And of course, also um, maintain good connectivity with the outside. So um, a lot of times a glass building is seen to be, how can the glass building be energy efficient? And we've shown with this building through the modeling um, and through the performance of the building, really, I mean, the energy numbers are out there, um, that you can build a glass building that offers tremendous quality of space, excellent connectivity to the outside, tremendous daylighting, where you really, for this building, for any time the sun's out, really, you don't need to have a light on when the sun's above the horizon, and having a tremendous quality of space with low energy use. There are a few different ways to approach an energy efficient design, uh, and, and, you know, at Manitoba Hydro, we, we think about sort of that there's a submarine approach to design, and that's been, been uh, sort of the right since the energy crisis in the 1970s there was a thought that we need to add more insulation we need to add more air tightness we need to control the energy flows in and out of a building that's a I mean that's a terrific approach for getting um, sort of good incremental improvements on on our building technology uh, and our building stock f and, and it's served us very well for a long period of time um, but to achieve sort of the next generation of, of energy efficiency savings and and also to increase the quality of space because, I mean, as the walls get thicker and the windows get smaller, it becomes less of an inviting environment to work in. Um, and so uh, having more of a climatically responsive approach, you're looking at what the climate can offer, you're opening up your building a little bit more, even in a climate like Winnipeg's, uh, I think the climatically responsive approach of, of harnessing passive solar energy, understanding wind patterns and, and using that to your advantage in the building, taking advantage of, of, of the passive uh, thermodynamic approaches that have, have been used by by builders for thousands of years, uh, harnessing all of those uh, advantages that are freely available to us can, can offer a space that is significantly better in terms of indoor comfort, in terms of quality of space, connectivity with the outside, uh, and also energy efficiency and sustainability.